Hello Internet, and welcome to another episode of That's All I Have to Say About That. As always, I'm your host, Stephen Mackey. Today we're talking about the Eurozone, one of those things that, much like Donald Trump's Twitter feed, seems to only get mentioned if something bad has happened. So why am I talking about it today? Did Greece gamble away their entire country's GDP on horse racing? Nope. Whew. In fact, the Eurozone is actually getting together to try to improve its... Ladies and gentlemen, it's a summit day in Brussels. On the agenda, a number of ideas for reforming the Eurozone and the European Union as a whole. Some of these ideas have been discussed extensively in the media and in our publication. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a more engaging reporter than this man, who sounds like what would happen if Microsoft Sam gave an economics lecture. There are two main things on the docket, all designed to address different problems in the Eurozone. We have the creation of a Euro budget and Euro finance minister versus the creation of a European monetary fund and the creation of a Euro banking union. Now if your eyes just glazed over harder than Donald Trump watching a foreign film, then don't worry, this is all pretty simple yet important stuff. So let's start with the Euro budget and Euro finance minister. The basic idea here is that the Eurozone pools money. Picture a Scrooge McDuck pool if you will. Although since this is probably going to be in a Swiss bank account, some of that is for sure Nazi gold. Anyways, if you're a European country who is in financial troubles, you would have access to this pool of euros to boost your domestic investment. Wow, what kind of person would be against that? Well, according to Reuters, the head of the European Finance Committee is not the biggest fan. He's currently facing off against French President Emmanuel Macron and German President Angela Merkel. If I'm a poor European country though, I'm not sure if I want the two richest economies in the Eurozone determining exactly how I might end up getting bailed out. That's like hearing It is riddled with loopholes that let some special interests, including myself in all fairness, this is going to cost me a fortune this thing, believe me, believe me, this is not good for me. Me it's not, so I have some No, I'm not saying that these tax cuts are good or bad, but if tax cuts to the rich are costing Donald Trump a fortune, those bankruptcies must not have gone the way I thought they did. The problem they're trying to solve in this case is that, in general, when a country has economic problems, they lower interest rates, which lowers the value of their currency to increase the amount of money being invested. This was reported in 2008. Americans are getting it from all sides, from inflation. Today, the government reported the second biggest monthly increase since 1982 to the mortgage net. Ah, oh, yes, the good old days. Now, this is pretty widely accepted as a good way of fighting a recession, and also why we engaged in massive government bailouts. So why are we talking about that? Well, as you can imagine, if you're not in a recession, a massive shift downward in currency prices is not something you're hoping for, as is the case in the Eurozone. You see, if Greece starts to spend money like it's a sailor on leave to restart their economy, a side effect of that is inflation, which would be fine if they were using the lira, but they're sharing the euro with countries that are having thriving economies. That would be like farting in an uber pool. Sure, it's relief for you, but man does that suck for everyone else. A more fitting metaphor would be, and I know this is hard to imagine, but what if Puerto Rico were in an economic calamity and wanted the dollar to become less valuable so they could invest in their infrastructure and pensions? Yeah, I wonder how amenable the US would be to that. The only solution to that in the past existed for the Eurozone countries was They don't have anything to offer the country. The only thing they have to offer is catastrophe. Greece now looks set to endorse a European Union plan which would write off a small share of its public debt in return for severe cuts to government spending, pensions and wages. So-called austerity measures that have prompted riots. Greece is going to remain in my... Ah yes, Greece, the former child star of European countries. It peaked a few thousand years ago and hasn't been able to get its act together since. The idea supported by Macron and Merkel would be to create a separate Eurozone pool of money with its own budget and management. 
Now that sounds more innocent than an episode of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood about sharing. So why would someone oppose that? Well, Jean-Claude Duncker is arguing instead for a European Monetary Fund saying that the EU already has a budget. So why complicate things by making a second budget and a second group overseeing that budget? When you could just make the first one bigger and put the vice president of the European Commission looking over it. Now this might sound like a conflict that would be resolved faster than a game of rock paper scissors, but both sides have dug in. The worry is that, according to the Financial Times, Germany and France think that in giving EU leaders control over bailouts, it's all just a power grab by the EU. Although man, if anyone ever needed more power, it's the EU. That place is losing people faster than a concert hall when the band says, all right, now we're gonna try some new stuff. So there you have it. The EU wants to give bailout power to the EU, and France and Germany want to give bailout power to the countries. Which, let's face it, with Britain gone means giving the power to Germany and France. Yeah, okay Luxembourg, you're definitely our equal. You know we invaded your land so many times, I'm expecting a free t-shirt soon. Wow, sorry for the terrible German accent, but you get the point. That said, there's also infighting between France and Germany over the function of the proposed Euro budget. According to the Financial Times again, while Germany views it only as the lender of the last resort, France, a country known for their efficiency, wants to give Euros to countries in minor financial trouble as well. Ah, oh, France, every used car salesman's dream come true. Germany is the real financial powerhouse of the EU, so if it ever comes down to it, and if history has ever taught us anything, if Germany and France ever butt heads, Germany's probably gonna win. Interestingly enough, there is no country vocally supporting it leaving the system the way it is. Except for maybe China, who is currently buying up Greek land like the country's hosting a going out of business sale. The other big EU reform that's currently being debated is the European Banking Union. Now these days banks seem to have the lifespan of fruit flies, and while in the US you treat them like a trust fund kid and give them money when they fail, oh JP Morgan is a really smart company, they just made a few mistakes. In the Eurozone, that's a lot harder to do for a few reasons. First and most importantly, generally if a bank approaches a government begging for money, that bank might not be the best investment. This isn't a problem when it's the country lending the money to its own bank in its own interest, but it gets more complicated when it's a Spanish bank asking for Europe's euros for that bank. When Spanish banks were bailed out in 2012, the Wall Street Journal asked this question. Would remove that big uncertainty from the Spanish government. Right. That has not happened. Why did the money go to the government and not to the banks? What was the calculation behind that? Well, there are a couple of reasons. The, the first and, and most important one is that the rest of the Eurozone didn't particularly want to invest in Spanish banks. If the, if the Eurozone rescue money was to go directly to the banks, that would mean that uh, Eurozone governments, the European taxpayers, would be holding shares in uh, Spanish banking companies. Those are, needless to say, extremely risky investments uh, and not at all what the European Yes, it turns out that putting money into failing companies isn't a good idea. Who would have known besides everyone who's ever funded a tech company on Patreon? Instead, in the past, the Eurozone has given money to the country instead, who uses it to bail out the banks. Because it's a lot easier to collect from the country of Spain than some guy with a failed company. I heard one that's a more permanent address. Although, with Catalonia going the way it is, who knows? Anyways, in 2015, the Eurozone created the Single Resolution Board to deal directly with failing regional banks. The goal of this group is to assist with the dissolution of banks that the European Central Bank declares are impaired. Now this is the exact opposite of a bailout, which makes it pretty controversial. According to Bloomberg, this 2015 European Single Resolution Board is great because it discusses how to dissolve a bank without dealing with the people who have deposited in those banks. That's like figuring out the perfect YouTube channel and not having a video recording device. Deposit insurance is a critical part of dealing with banks if you want to let them fail, and as of now, that has not existed eurozone wide. 
This new plan being discussed by the leaders in the Eurozone would put those financial backstops in so people who deposit in a bank that fails can get some of their money back. But Germany, Finland, and the Netherlands are strongly against this because they don't want their taxpayers paying for a country with terrible banking regulations. So there you have it. That's the debate that's being heard across Europe right now, and all stemming from a lack of unity in the European Union. Thank you, and that's all I have to say about that.